All right, welcome back. I hope you guys are doing okay. Uh, after my last video about the tone preserver, I'm reading all the comments. I've come up with the uh, solution, which has always been there, but I just never had one until now. But it's called the Amp Maniac, and that one's on the left. But today, we're going to go over some more electrical testing in both amps since these are two vintage amps. There's a 59 basement on the left and a 60 basement on the right. Both have identical power transformers and we're going to compare the two to see how these voltage reducers affect both amps. You may wonder why I've got that gallon of water sitting over there. Well, we'll use that too. But well, let's get right down to it. For starters, the new Amp Maniac, new to me, on the left, is fully regulated from zero to line voltage. I have them both hooked up. I'd say I've got the amp preserver hooked up to the Maniac. And you can see it's a lot like a Variac. See, they're both, the voltages are going down. The advantage to this is you'll never go over your line voltage like you can with a Variac. Most Variacs will go up to 130 or 140 volts. If somebody accidentally came by and said, hey, what's this knob do? while you're not looking and turn it all the way up and you've got 140 volts on your amp, kiss that thing goodbye. But uh, the disadvantage for me and the reason I never got the Amp Maniac is this generally the Amp Maniac is fused for two and a half amps, 2.5, and it generally only runs one amp, but I think you can run two on it. And this one I've been able to run at least four amps at one time cranked. Now, I don't ever do that normally, but I tried it and I didn't blow any fuses, but this one's fused at five amp. So you can put more amps on this one than this one. This one's more expensive. This is $220 versus $180. So you're spending 40 extra dollars to have the fully full variability of your voltage and you're basically paying for extra copper because that's what this, uh, similar to a Variac, there's just a lot of copper in there, and it weighs more. And we'll go over that in just a second. But a lot, you know, this, the point of my first video wasn't to say, hey, you need this. The real point was don't spend $350 on a, an inferior product, I feel it's inferior, when you can get this at half the price and it does more than the competition. A lot of people were buying the $350 brown box and this is better for half the price. Now this one's a little more. Now what I've, I'm real happy about right now is that I have both of these. So for $400, I've got two of these compared to $350 for one that only works on one amp. And what I'm going to do now, which I don't gig anymore, but I, for a gigging musician, you can leave this hooked up because most of the time, you know, you got everything hooked up. You don't want to mess with it when you're going to a gig. Take this one to the gig and leave that one at home. Yeah, perfect solution. Let's get back to some of the comments I had about, oh, I can build that thing with an $18 transformer. If you feel that you have the, the whereabouts to build your own, go ahead. I would do the same thing. But it's too much trouble for me and probably most other touring or, or any musician that has a vintage amp. There were other comments that said you can buy a $10 Variac on eBay, and it, but then you got to buy a meter and then you got to buy a, a power strip. And so there's three big old things you got to haul around. Most of the Vari Variacs on eBay or the cheap Chinese Variacs only have a voltage meter. They don't have an ammeter. By the time you buy all of those parts and put it together, you haven't saved a whole bunch of money. And plus, you just got this big bulky package of stuff you got to carry around. Now, I do take a power strip with me to the gig because I plug 
everything into it. But let's get to the weight. That's where this bottle of water comes from. That's how much a lightweight Bariac weighs. Go pick up a gallon of water and you'll see what you're going to be hauling around with the Bariac. The Ant Preserver is the lightest. At two pounds, 13 ounces. Very light, easy to pick up. Now, like I said, with the, with the more copper into the Maniac, it weighs a little more. About three pounds, four ounces. Now, you've got your Variac. Here's your Variac. 8 pounds, 8 ounces. This is what you're going to be hauling around with your Variac. This is just to demonstrate the variable nature of the Ant Maniac. I can go all the way down to uh, zero. When you get down to zero, the meter will go dark because it runs off the voltage. So you don't really get a reading at zero because the meter goes out. Now you could use your digital meter. See the lowest voltage I can go. Yeah, it looks like about 35 volts that thing starts to show up. Either way, you can use this to reform old capacitors on old amps. If you want to start an amp up slowly, that's a great use of it. All right, here's experiment number one. Right here is the plate voltage at full line voltage, which right now is 121. It actually fluctuates between 121, 123. Here is the heater voltage which are the green wires that go to your pilot light. So as I turn this down to 6.3, which is the correct voltage, you'll see the plate voltage drop. We're gonna put it right on 6.3. All right. Now this was a little bit of an experiment for myself because this is the way I'm gonna set the amp up and now I'm running at 113 volts, which is a little less than what I can do with the amp preserver, which is around 115. So, and that puts the uh, plate voltage at 437, which is pretty darn close to the schematic, which shows 432. So I'm only five volts difference from the plate voltage that this amp's supposed to run at. So that's pretty cool. I'm gonna, now I know that when I plug my amp in I'm going to put it at 113 and over here and I should be good to go as far as having it run just like it was designed back in the late 50s at 110 volts you know we went from 110 volts to 117 and then uh, now it's 123 125 if you look at your tube chart but it says power supply 110 volts right there see 110 volts so at 123 volts 125 volts your amp's going to be running hot you don't want that i'm going to do the other amp now and we'll see how close the plate voltage is on the 1960. i forgot real quick i was going to check the uh heater wires on the rectifier right here it's supposed to run at five volts. That's why you always see a five AR four. That five stands for five volts. So at the same 113 volts, I'm getting almost five volts on the rectifier, 4.91. Now let's see what happens when I raise, uh, right now I'm in standby. Let me take it off standby. Okay. We're going to jack it back up to um, line voltage because I've always been curious of what my rectifiers are running at, the heater. That's not too bad. 470 volt plate, 5.2 on the rectifier. Now one thing I noticed in the new 59 reissue schematic, which I was really shocked, 
If you look at the voltages on the vintage amp, it's 432. You look on the new reissue amp, they've got the voltage on the plates all the way up to 491. So that's crazy. That's just because of the new power transformers and the high voltage coming out of your house. And everything's designed around this high voltage now. And those tubes really aren't rated much higher than I think they're rated at 500 volts so you're pushing those tubes in the modern amp okay now we're hooked up to the 1960 basement and voltages are looking very similar 6.84 on the heaters I've still got it in standby so we don't know the plate voltage yet 120 volts line here we go down wow look at that almost identical and I'm going to go down to 6.3 on the heaters and we're at the exact same 113 volts oh my goodness would you look at that I mean I, I when I looked at it it was 432 bolts on the plate it jumped up well it's jumping around a little bit either way it's almost right on the schematic which is pretty interesting to me all right this is the rectifier heater on the 1960 over here and it almost matches the 1959 exactly i mean the plate voltage is let's say 430 five four it's fluctuating a little bit heater voltage is 4.87 that should be five so now we're going to go into one of the misconceptions there was about voltages and why they all went up when i raised the voltage going into the amp all right there was a question in the comments you'll see you say well i thought when you raise the bias voltage the plate voltage would go down and that's true if you actually raise the bias voltage by itself. But when you're running in this power cord into the power amp, all increases in the voltage will increase all of the voltages going through the circuit. This is, their bias. This is the bias right now at 33.4 millivolts, milliamps. This is the plate voltage at 436. This is probably where I will be when um, I readjust the amp at 112, 113 volts power. And here I'm gonna raise the, as I raise the bias, this, actually I might raise this bias until this plate voltage gets down to 432, just like the schematic. But let's see if, how high I have to go. You see the plate voltage is dropping. Let me go up even higher. So I'm at 40. Now the plate voltage has dropped to 430. All right, so this is pretty cool. The hot side for the bias when the plate voltage is at 432 is about 42 milliamps. Like I said, my bias probe converts to millivolts. I'm going to keep it at this bias, and now I know that my plate voltages are going to run exactly like the circuit. I mean, you don't have to do that, but I'm just going to try it for a while. And this is on the, the total hot side. It's uh, 3 millivolts lower than uh, the hot. So there you go. Good way to set your bias without doing it by ear. All right, just to prove a point, you saw that when I raised the bias, the plate voltage went down. When I lowered the bias, the plate voltage goes up. So now I'm gonna change I'm gonna raise the voltage here with the box, and you'll see they'll both go up. See so it went from 432 to 465. It went it jumped 30 volts on the plates and about four millivolts for almost five millivolts on the or milliamps on the uh, bias so 
So now I can go back down to 113. All right, so there you go. For all you guys who want to dial it into the Nats, you know what? There it is. This is where I'm going to leave it. 113 volts. I got 6.28. It gets to 6.3 heater voltage. I'm at 40.7 millivolts uh, bias, which is just a hair under 70%. And plate voltage at 433, 432. Exactly like the schematic. All right, you can't go wrong with either one. Um, I, I'm happy I've got both now. I said I'm gonna use this. I, I actually, I've got the bad rectifier in the amp right now. I was gonna do that experiment to show you the amp's health. And for some reason, the rectifier looks good. Thank goodness. Don't ever throw your old tubes away. That's a mullard. And I'm still running at 0.6 amps. And I jammed with it for a while. And it didn't look out of the ordinary. So I mean, that's another good thing. I, I have no clue what, what blew my amp. I mean blew my fuse. But uh, it's not doing it anymore. And everything's working great. I'll put all the links in the description below so that you can purchase either one of these. And I mainly just want to keep you guys from spending a lot of money on an inferior product and get you a good product for a good price. Talk to you later. Yeah, this is just a view of the back. I don't think I've ever shown the back of the units. This is, of course, the Maniac with the knob on top. This is the preserver. You can see this one goes up to 5 amps. This one goes up to 2.5 amps. And you can plug your uh, power strip in here. And plug on this one, you can plug just about anything you want into it. And this one, at, le at least one, maybe two amps.